Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning briefing. It is so great to be back with you all. Phil Friedman here from Friedman Adventures. And man, I got to tell you, fishing is really good right now. You got to pick your spots. It's not always wide open, but there are some really great opportunities to be had out on the water. And of course, there's some stinkers thrown in there. That's part of the fishing game. You just got to go have some fun. Enjoy the great outdoors. There's nothing quite like it. Really great to be back with you all. Hey, right up front, let me tell you, the weather's really nice just about everywhere we look. I think we're going to have good weather for most of the time, maybe an occasional blow up here and there. But of course, that's been this year. The vientos, the winds have been with us all year long, and it's been crazy. But down in San Diego, Ensenada, those guys that are fishing offshore are encountering beautiful seas right now, and that means a lot. And when I say great weather, remember here on the Friedman Adventures YouTube channel, we're talking about seas and wind. I mean, you can look back there and see it's foggy, and some of you would define that as not great weather, but we're not talking about whether it's raining or whether it's misty or any of that. We're talking about calm seas. That's the most important thing when we're out fishing. And speaking of fog, it was pea soup fog all over here in the LA Orange County based areas off the coast. And it looks like we got some of that again here this morning. All right, one thing for you. I talk all the time about my friend Tucker McCombs up there on board the Endeavor out of Ventura Harbor Sword Fishing. He's booked virtually until November. You can't get out with a guy. And he's had some spectacular fishing, which we'll talk about when we get into the island report. But he's got a charter, a 2.5 day charter coming up. And you can get on that trip if you would like to. You gotta call John. There's a couple of spots open, 2.5 day Endeavor. I don't even know John, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be a great trip. 310-721-3625, your chance to get on the Endeavor. And man, they have been walloping the sea bass up there in that neck of the woods. Let's go south of the border. Start with my Pongaro friends down there in Ensenada and tell you all that those guys are trolling around with Mad Max and coming up with some spectacular catches on the bluefin tuna. Not everybody, not every time, but very consistent right now. And a lot of these guys are fishing just outside of Todos Santos Islands, like eight miles outside, 10 miles, 12 miles, a little bit down the beach, a little bit up to the north. They're finding these nice bluefin tuna, a lot of 30 to 60 pound stuff down there in that neck of the woods, but there's also that superior 100 plus pound stuff wandering around there also, which meets it, makes it so special. You know, when you're on a ponga, you don't need 40 bluefin tuna to make your trip. You need maybe two or three, and then you've had a spectacular trip. And there's nothing like getting on board a ponga out of Ensenada or any place in Mexico. I love the people down there and the fishing, but you get on and it's a whole different thing. You're not on the Royal Polaris. You're not on this luxury long range. It's there with a local fisherman and it can be so much fun. So again, that is looking good. And some private boaters, Jolene Thompson, who's gonna be on our live show, sent me these photos. These guys were 70 miles down the coast, so kind of the Ensenada area, maybe a little bit below there, maybe right out in front of there. They're jigging around there. And you can see they had not only bluefin tuna, but they had a little splash of yellowfin tuna. And that is in our future. I talked many weeks ago when that bluefin was not biting that well about what the salvation could possibly be. Number one, albacore, which it seems like I've blown again this year, but we still have time. So there's good oceanography, cooler water offshore. We'll see if that happens. Number two, kelp patties and the influx of tropical and subtropical fish. And we are seeing that. I'll get into that in one more moment. And then the bluefin settling down and biting. And I'll tell you, they have not done that this year for any stretch of time. Now, long range boats out of San Diego keep a lid on it, but they're thumping them at night with some really good fishing. Not to say that there are not some misses at time, but there has been some truly outstanding fishing at night. And it is continuing with those 300 to 500 gram jigs working good at night, keeps that jig straight in front of you. 100 to 130 pound, you gotta be fishing with two speed reels. It really makes a difference. And we've talked about it, but worth reiterating one more time. When you have that heavy, good tackle, like Daiwa, that's what we suggest. You get daiwa up with a good rail rod and a two speed reel that has the force 
to land one of these beautiful hard fighting fish, then you get it on the boat and it allows you not only to catch your fish, your prize catch, but it allows everybody on board a better chance because the quicker that fish comes on board, the more likely it is you'll find another school and you might find that one that really wants to bite. There has been some stinker trips on the bluefin tuna and there's been some good stuff. There's more daytime fish starting to bite right now, but that nighttime seems to be more consistent. So some mixed scores on the bluefin. Sometimes they just shut down and get locked jaw. Other times they get biting pretty darn well. They've been driving people nuts all year long. They've been driving people nuts during my whole lifetime. So no reason for that to change. There's sinker fish. During the daytime, there's popper fish. Uh, and of course, nighttime with the jigs working really, really well. All right, let's talk kelp patty out of San Diego because it's good right now. You now, kelp patty fishing by its very nature is a numbers game. The more kelps you find, the more likely it is you're gonna find one loaded up with fish. And you can miss, you don't find the right kelp, you can get yourself into a situation where you're like, well, what the heck? This boat over here has limits of yellow there and we haven't caught a thing. It's kind of the nature of this, but I gotta tell you, the weather is great. And one thing worth emphasizing, when we talk kelp patty yellowtail, many times you have it in your head, okay, three to five pound rats. That is not the case. I mean, there's some small grade yellowtail, and you may have a trip where you catch smaller fish, but for the most part, it is beautiful, grade yellowtail on the kelps right now, and some really tremendous fishing. The Grande with 31 anglers, 117 yellows, and a nice hit on the flatheads with 20. Three, Dorado, it doesn't get much better than that. You definitely want to have a rod with 25 to 30 pound, probably 30 pound fluorocarbon on it. We like OpsonUSA.com. Put in FA at checkout, and that will make all the difference in the world because you'll get a free gift and a handwritten note from my friend Greg Brown. So a great day on the Grande. And the guys that are finding those kilts are doing really well. The Mustang, 22 guys, big gray yellows on the kilts, 83 yellowtail. Three Dorado, what a nice hit. The Poseidon on a day and a half trip decided, hey, let's hit the kelps and then we can mess around with the bluefin at night. And it paid off limits of yellowtail and a lot of that fish 10 to 20 pounds on the kelps. I'm telling you, it doesn't get much better than that. You could also bring, and I highly recommend a 40 to 50 pound rod and the Daiwa Sakana jigs have been red hot, muy caliente. So you definitely want to have something that you can jig with and you always want to go heavy when you are fishing iron. And that sounds like some outstanding fishing. Private boaters hitting kelps, doing really, really well. And some of those Ensenada boys are finding kelps with good amounts of yellowtail, big grade, Dorado, and a little bit of yellowfin. As I mentioned, that private boater down there at 70 miles had some fish. There's fish further down the long range boys have been on and doing really, really well on. So that tropical and subtropical stuff normally just gets better and better and better. We get warmer water as we move into the fall and all that stuff continues to move up the peninsula. Great fishing going on, no question about it. Islands at Todos Santos off Ensenada, we continue to see a lot of barracuda, a few yellowtail, quite a bit of yellowtail south of there down there at Santo Tomas. That bite has been really good down there in that neck of the woods. We up at the Coronado Islands, we dealt with wind against current and some other poor conditions in the morning hours. And guys were scratching at the yellowtail, doing pretty darn good. But once again, it picked up. Conditions kind of rectified themselves late in the day. And the San Diego, for example, he was at the Coronado Islands, 27 yellowtail, 33 barracuda, very late bite. If conditions settle down, that bite will come back. And the San Diego and several other boats have had superior fishing. San Diego had a day recently with over a hump on the yellowtail, over 100 yellowtail. Doesn't get much better than that. Fly line, sometimes you have to drop down to lighter line, like 20 pound, but most of the time, you're fishing 25, a good hot bait, and some surface irons like Taddy 45s have also been very, very effective. Grouping all the San Clemente, Santa Barbara, San Nicolas together, pretty fair fishing. There's quite a bit of yellowtail starting to move up into this zone. There's bluefin scattered everywhere, so bring their bluefin gear. If you have it, bring it because you could encounter it at Catalina Island, San Clemente Island, Santa Barbara Island, back there on the Osborne Bank. There's fish on that now. So it is looking pretty darn good. Freedom with 17 yellowtail, fish 10 to 20 pounds, a lot of it in that 18 to 20, 25 pound class. 
tons of sea lions still bugging the guys. It is an A1 pain in the neck. And they also had some bonita. On board the Thunderbird, they had a group of guys, novice anglers, so rent rotters we call them pejoratively, I guess. But rent rotters, novice anglers. So 14 guys on there, and they had 15 yellowtail. And those fish were 15 to 25 pound class. Whenever you have a group of novice anglers and they come up with a score like that, you can be sure there's a good crew there teaching and helping and doing their thing because it's tough and there's structure and you're a new angler, you don't know how to battle those fish, how important it is to get line on them. So hats off to the guys on the Thunderbird. El Dorado lost a bunch of yellows yesterday, ended up with three yellowtail, but had that, you know, at least double digit loss. 18, 20 pound, or 20 fish, something like that. So pretty crazy fishing. In the Channel Islands, we see some absolutely incredible fishing for sea bass. And right next to it, another boat doesn't do all that well. Recently, a couple days ago, the Mirage had great fishing, as you can see. It has been fantastic, stupendous, awesome fishing. Sometimes a 10 ounce dropper loop rig, sometimes a three ounce lead head that you cast out and wind back, all those methods have been working. The Endeavor here recently, well, it was a tremendous trip. I mean, Phil Nguyen, 3.5 day trip, 11 guys, 99 white sea bass, 20 halibut. As you look at all of the fish that the guys on the Endeavor with Philip caught, and Philip, you got one heck of a nice first name, I've got to tell you, I like that. Great day on there. Aloha Spirit yesterday, one white sea bass. And I mentioned the Aloha Spirit because if there's a boat who's gonna get them, it's gonna be the Aloha Spirit. It just shows you how fickle white sea bass are, how frustrating they can be when it's wide open. And then sometimes you do everything right as a crew, you work your tails off, and sometimes the white sea bass just look at you and say no. And unfortunately, that still goes on up there in that neck of the woods. All right, let me take you up and down the coast. You know, it's almost like it's still winter time. I mean, water temps and everything else along some areas of the coast are not good, so you don't see calico bass, you don't see sand bass in any big numbers. You don't see big scores on the Barracuda. So hopefully that will rectify San Diego all the way up here in the LA Orange County area. We're seeing a little bit of bass, a lot of guys on these local boats still fishing the Sculpin. We'll keep our eyes on that for you very, very closely. Hopefully that's gonna kick into gear. I did skip over Catalina. Excuse me, let me go back to Cat and say that it's okay. You know what I mean? Conditions over there have been suffering here recently also. So there's a little bit of Bonita, Yellowtail, White Sea Bass, not all the time on the Yellows and Sea Bass, a few Halibut once in a while, but mostly picking at the Bonita, Cats and Short Calico Bass, and a few Legals that has been the situation. It certainly was for most of the boats we looked at yesterday. So not off the hook wide open by any stretch, just fingers crossed that that's gonna to come together. And then back to the coast, we take you up to Ventura where the island spirit up there with my friend Cody Rogers, uh, afternoon barracuda bite out at the islands, pretty good. Not bad at all, 29 guys, 44 barracuda, 10 calico bass, scratching away, fishing surface iron is the only way to take Barracuda, it is by far the best way. Up there in the Channel Islands, further up there in the Santa Barbara area, uh, we see the Coral Sea with limits of rockfish up there in that neck of the woods, but they've had some great sea bass fishing. It's all weather dependent. There's still squid up there. Man, that place, Channel Islands in general, has been fantastic this year. So that, of course, is gonna continue. Along the beaches, just a moment ago, and those, well, you can see this guy back here dining on a thornback, it looks like. He's been dining all show long. I didn't even notice him. So um, as we get you in the surf, uh, one more night of grunion hunting tonight, and there has been some really outstanding corbina fishing going on. Light line, six pound, eight pound, natural baits. There's also been some spot fan croaker, bolsa chica has been kicking out some spot fin croaker and some yellow fin croaker. Yellow fin croaker will bite the artificials. Spot fin almost always want natural bait, sandworms and that kind of a thing will work best of all. So you're gonna have to put in your due diligence to dig those up or make it easy and walk down to Big Fish Bait and Tackle right here on Seal Beach and PCH to get your best surf fishing tackle. 
All right, everybody, and, oh, I'm up there in the bay, we're seeing some pretty good surf fishing around the Topaz Rock Jetty also. So once again, things are trying to get together. That kelp patty bite down there in San Diego is outstanding right now. That variety is flushing in. We're seeing more and more of it. And then that Channel Island bite, there's misses on all these places, okay? I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I'm just telling you, both those areas look really, really good. You might want to give John a call if you want to get on that trip on the Endeavor. And of course, our Malahini trip sailing on Friday morning at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You got to be kidding me. You should jump on this, man. Kelp Patty fishing is not going to get any better. Bill Wilkerson is such a great guy. And we have a group of guys that go on the boat who regularly fish on the Freedman Adventures charters who are second to none. And I'm not only talking about being really great anglers, I'm talking about being really good human beings. Lots of fun to be on board with those guys. I can't wait to do it. All right, everybody, have a great day today. Thanks for joining us on the morning briefing here with Freedman Adventures. As always, I can't thank you enough for building our channel so quickly. So many views, so many hours consumed. I owe that all to you. Take care. Have a great finish to your weekend. I'll see you again tomorrow morning.